Hi there, this is Tom from Enemy, and we're at The Great Escape in Brighton with The Reels. How's it going, guys? Hey, man. Hey, man. Yeah, it's doing really it's good. going good, thanks. Yeah. yeah. So before we came on, you uh, just quoted a poem uh, that was said by the Libertines <laughs> yes. at the Enemy Awards. Yeah, Tell us a little right. bit about that poem. Um, it's uh, Siegfried Sassoon, Suicide in the Trenches. I don't know why they quoted it. It's a bit dark, really. But um, yeah, I just learned it because I saw that award ceremony and then now for sound checks like rather than doing going like oh one two one two check check in Slovakia right I, I say that I say that poem so yeah. I, I stick to the one two <laughs> yeah. I can't learn poems yeah, yeah. they don't yeah. usually let me have a mic DJ so Randall <laughs> <laughs> Libertines, they're a big thing for you guys, I'm guessing, then. If yes. you're watching ceremonies from 2006, <laughs> like, Yeah, yeah, big influence. No, he was just watching that when he was, like, three. He was just <laughs> watching that. Yeah. I was like, wow, yeah, I remember yeah. that poem. Yeah, it's actually really, like, how um, we kind of met Mason, uh, Cal... Well, we went to uni in London, and then we met Mason at, at Cal's. And literally, we needed a drummer. Mason was like, you guys need a drummer. I'm your drummer. And that, that's been it ever since. But the big thing, like, originally was that Mason liked the Libertines, and we were massive Libertines fans. So, yeah, that's kind of... That's kind of really like where it uh, started. <laughs> it's nice to have those mutual influences. No one's arguing about the Libertines. No. <laughs> Who's the biggest fan? No. I would say if you're doing the yeah. poems, <laughs> it's got to be you. Yeah. yeah, it's got to be you. Um, so is this your first time at the festival? Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. Well, first time in Brighton yeah. for you, yeah, not, for me. not yeah. for me. But, but what have you heard about the festival and kind of the vibe and the shows? Well, I think the, the vibe around Brighton itself is just it's just like really good. Every time I've been down here, it's just been like. Beachy. Yeah, yeah, Sunny. beachy. Yeah, see, I, I'm used to uh, Lincolnshire beaches, so I'm used to like Skegness and, and Grimsby, yeah. you know, so. And, yeah, green, and green Sea. <laughs> yeah, so I'm expecting good things, yeah. So you're yeah. looking out and you're seeing the blue sea and the blue water yeah. and thinking, wow. Yeah, it's odd. Usually it's brown. Yeah, so. Uh, it's no different for me, man. South End on Sea. Beautiful <laughs> South End on Sea. Sea, sea, sea side is, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> uh, you guys have just released your EP, Do It Differently. It feels like with that release that everything kind of started to click together for you guys what was it about putting together that EP uh, that kind of did that for you well I guess one of the big things one of the differences it's the first time we've ever like recorded a big body of work and we spent like a week together you know creating that in a studio and uh, I definitely think there's a, a like kind of like a musical connection between all the tunes um, but also like do it differently has like changed a lot for us over time like, originally it was just kind of like you know about doing things differently or whatever but now it's kind of like more about doing it your own way finding your own way what that means you know what I mean and and really like listening back to it now like now it's come out it's kind of like more a more a sense of like self-discovery than anything I feel like yeah I mean that's how, that self-discovery journey like you say that is a hard bit especially when you're making music and you're trying new things but it's interesting that over time it's changed for you guys and it probably changed for your listeners as well as they're listening along. Yeah, I reckon so. Definitely. Yeah. yeah, definitely. <laughs> yep. I agree. Yeah. Um, but what's also been great, you guys are coming around um, right now, you're touring, you're hitting all these shows. Feels like there's a, a big kind of like indie revival. People want to get out there, listen to bands. Uh, are you feeling the, the audiences are ready for something like you guys? Definitely. I, like, I think when, when sort of we jumped on TikTok, that's when we knew that there was there was like a sort of taste for it and and I think TikTok has really boosted that sort of indie zone and so to speak. Mm. I think coming out of like a lockdown for you know on and off like year and a half, two years or whatever, has really like given people this renewed sense of I want to go out and do stuff you know like we were all just caged yeah. for for quite a long time and I think there is something in kind of like guitar music you know indie rock whatever you want to call it whatever kind of like avenue goes down punk you know um there's just something really like free about that kind of like the balance between sort of chaos and like you know um good musicianship yeah. and or I think yeah it's accessible that's a part of it anyone can have a go and anyone can like you say punk it can be yeah. sort of yeah. really just as long as it's intense and it feels good, anyone can have a go. Definitely, yeah. And what you were saying about TikTok as well, that is really interesting because I think previously a lot of artists and bands have maybe been a bit snobbish about it, but everyone's seeing the effects of it now and how quickly you can reach people. And mm. that, that must be amazing for you to reach those people. We, we were as well. We were, yeah. we were incredible. Like, I remember uh, our manager was telling us to, uh, he was like, you need to jump on TikTok. Like, no one's doing it right now. And this is when TikTok was still like people just dancing and doing things like that. And we were like, oh my days. God, what's <laughs> in it? Yeah. Uh, yeah, and I was like, what's wrong with him? Why is he telling us to jump on TikTok? This is yeah. horrendous. And then we did it and did it a few times, had a bit of fun with it. And then it, it's like, it's, it's just incredible. Like the way you can like reach a new, new audience, the interaction you can have with that audience as mm. well. If you're not on it, 
I don't know what you're doing, really. <laughs> yeah. Honestly. I, I mean, like, to quite a lot of people, it would look like, you know, we've just arrived year two years ago or whatever kind of because of tiktok but we were playing for three years you know before that together and then yeah. even longer me and you Cal. Yeah, nearly six years um, yeah too and, long and yeah <laughs> far too long but like t we played so many shows did so much like work and releases and trying to get ourselves out there and nothing came close mm. to just going on tiktok at the end of the day like the thing that really broke it for us was always there it was in our pocket you know what yeah. i mean we just didn't realize it yeah and i think what's Interesting about you guys, obviously you're from Lincoln, so a slightly regional scene, so not a big city, but like a strong local pride. Mm. Um, but these opportunities are letting you kind of reach people all around the world. Um, but for you, what is the Lincoln scene like? Are they supportive to you guys? I'm imagining they're your local heroes, surely. Very supportive, yeah. Very heroes, supportive. definitely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Legends, say. some would yeah, say. Yeah, yeah. 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 No, really, like <laughs> super, super supportive. Like we've got um, a friend of ours, Hannah Fletcher, she runs like the BBC Introducing show there and she's just, you know, promotes us no end. Yeah, so, so much, you know, respect for that and uh, even like the the local football uh, team Lincoln City like they promote us all the time. The and, Imps. Yeah, 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 the, the Imps. Imps yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, no, really it's like, there's not a big scene there's there's not loads of bands but we're all we all know each other and i feel like more than ever there that like something's happening there yeah. so yeah. was it kind of like not intimidating but when you're from a regional town not a lot of people pay attention you're competing with the big cities and you almost think like i don't know if we can <clears throat> stack up to these guys but i sense a real belief that you guys can do anything wherever whatever region if you're a musician you're from you can make it happen now I think we've uh, we've always sort of felt like the underdogs, even in Lincoln uh, when we were younger, yeah, like when me and Mitch yeah. were playing in like old bands under various names. Uh, we um, that we was one of the names, <laughs> various, yeah, various names. names, yeah, under various that names. Was one <laughs> um, and uh, we we uh, we felt like the underdogs there, and then sort of moved to Sheffield after that. Definitely felt like the underdogs there. Then moved to London, and I, I think we were smaller than underdogs there. Maybe maybe <laughs> un, under fleas. Under fleas. Yeah. yeah. And uh, but but yeah, it's just I think we've always said you just have that sort of blind belief that you can do it, and mm. then it sort of magically works. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think maybe this this regional thing of like being, especially because like people from Lincoln, you go down south and people are like, oh, you're northerners. You go up north and they're like, you're southerners. Yeah. You know. <laughs> and we have this like weird middle ground thing and I think that might be where that kind of comes from we're all like we all know our identity if you're from Lincoln or you're from like these regional areas East Midlands whatever you know it's really obvious to us and it's really strong and something we believe in but to everybody else they don't quite know it yet so yeah maybe it's that and I think what has been really interesting with your story you've done the EPs you're playing all these shows like you say you've been going at it for a little while now so it's not like an overnight success like some people might think but what would your advice be to some of these new bands coming through? They're just starting out, like, they've just come out of the pandemic, maybe they're starting to write music. Mm. Um, what kind of advice would you have liked to have heard uh, when you were putting it all together? I, I would say just write as much as possible, yeah. do as much as possible, gig as much as possible. And that, and that sounds really obvious, but sometimes you can feel a little bit precious when you're in a, in a first band and you're like, right, this mm. next EP we're going to bring out is going to be like, the Arctic Monkeys first EP so we yeah. need to be writing it really well it's not you've got a good few years left I mm. mean I remember writing things with with Mitch back in the day and we were like right so we'll do this EP and then we'll do our first album <laughs> and then that's our progression and your your years off of that so just get yeah. out there do as much as possible get like sort of is it learn the chops yeah, learn your, learn, yeah. learn your chops. Yeah, you have to just be terrible for yeah, a few yeah. years and, and just accept it and just and <laughs> that, think, yeah. we're bad at the minute. And that's just yeah. it. And you have to do that for years and then eventually someone goes, they're not that bad anymore. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. That's kind of us, really. Yeah. yeah. No, I think, I think that's the best bit of advice you can yeah. give, innit? You're going you're gonna to suck. Just keep yeah, sucking. Just keep and then you don't. Like yeah. And a bit of like real advice is don't play gigs without selling merch. That's like the one yeah. only thing you can make yeah. money on yeah. when, you, when yeah. you're a small band. And we yeah. just refused to for ages. Mm. And then we're like, oh my God, we can actually make money and, and like sell merch and people like it. Mm. I don't know why people don't do it. Yeah. Don't tell everyone. <laughs> yeah, they just give the secrets away. So you've got to suck a little yeah. bit, but make some t-shirts yeah. and it'll all work out. Yeah. 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 Just, exactly. just have a clothing brand. Just yeah. get the music <laughs> brand. Yeah. What's, yeah. The, yeah. What's yeah. the actual yeah. point? There's so much music, don't bother. Yeah. <laughs> just leave it to the reels. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Give me yes. your money. <laughs> right, thanks very much, guys. No Best problem. of luck with your set and thank yeah. you very much for watching. Thank, thank you, man.